Welcome back, Controls Champions, to the next recipe in our PLC programming cookbook. This is going to be an alternative option for our three-way and four-way light switches that we were talking about in the last video. So if you recall, in the last video, we had a rung that looked about like this one on the bottom. A little bit different, but it was about that size. It was nice and compact. Two switches that can turn on a single light together. Sort of like a light, again, in your hallway, uh, where you might have two entries to the hallway and you want to be able to turn the light on and off from both locations, independent of the state of the other switch. Again, for simple applications like that with just two switches, I think that's the simplest option. The way we talked about last time, I'll have a link here in the description. For larger things, I think it makes a lot more sense to do it this other way. So I'm going to talk through the simple case of two switches and then I'm going to show you three switches just so you can see how it scales, just like last time. First of all, the thought process here, instead of trying to determine exactly what state each one of these is at, I just care, did it change? And whenever one of these switches changed state, then I know that I want the light to change state. So I'm actually going to take a note out of a previous video where we talk about toggling something based on a button. And instead of toggling it based on a button, I'm gonna to toggle it based on state change of switches. This rung here where we're controlling the light is exactly that toggle code that we talked about in the other video. We'll take a one shot that says, hey, something changed, it's time to toggle. And at the instant that one shot happens, by the way, uh, just to refresher my terminology here for one shot means it happens for one PLC scan cycle. That means, you know, the PLC is constantly reading through this rung and then that rung and then doing whatever other programming stuff. And then it comes back and reads this rung and reads that rung. So a one shot will be on for exactly one scan. Some condition will make it true. The PLC will scan through and then the next time it comes here, it's gonna turn it off. It'll be false. So at that instant of that one shot, when something changed, I want the light to be whatever it's not. If light is on, then this will not be true, and that'll turn off. If the light is not on, then this will be true. It'll be conductive. We'll have a closed circuit through here, and the light will turn on. And any time that's not that instant when something changed, not that instant, not that one shot, then the light will just be whatever it is. So if it's on, it's going to stay on. If it's off, it's going to stay off. So with that idea in mind, now we just have to put together some logic that feeds into that one shot that says right now that's the instant when one of the switches changed. So I use a rising edge and a falling edge contact for each switch here. And the P and the N in this case is P for positive and for negative. Uh, again, rising edge or falling edge is common. This means at the instant that it changes from low to high, from off to on, from false to true, from zero to one, that's the positive, the rising edge. And the opposite case is true for negative edge, when it changes from true to false, on to off, one to zero. So I do that for switch one, and I do that for switch two also. At that instant that this switch changes, either to on or off, this will be on for that instant, and it will toggle our light. So let's do a quick simulation of that. So you notice these are all false right now. Those are both off. This will be off. And then right now, we're not in the instant where the toggle one shot is true. We're not at the instant where something changed. So the light is just maintaining whatever it is. Right now it's off, so it's staying off. As soon as I flip a switch, notice that we see this switch is on, but this isn't still on. This is just the rising edge or the falling edge or whatever. It's, it's so fast we're not going to be able to see it in our simulator, but we have to know that it happened. So for a moment, this was true. For a moment, it was true here, and the light was off at that moment. So this was conductive for one moment, long enough to turn on the light, and then the next time it scanned through, this went back to false. So that was false, which made this conductive. And at that moment, now the light was on. So now it's maintaining itself on. It's, it's latching itself on. And we can click through 
any of these switches. They all work in any combination, just like we saw with the other example, just like we would expect for the light switches in the hallway. And like I talked about in the last video, these switches, we're assuming on the machine here that these are a single contact switch. They're not a two contact like you would actually see in your house. Although we could do that, but if we're gonna run it into the PLC, a second contact doesn't really help us unless there's a third position in the switch. And these are two position switches. Let's get out of simulation and talk about what if we had a third switch? If we start talking about four-way switches, <clears throat> and again, these, these are still single switches, uh, or uh, rather they're, they're two position switches with a single contact. They're not special switches. They're just more of them now. I think this is easier to understand as it scales than the other method we talked about, because now I know this is always the same, this light toggle rung. We haven't changed that at all. And we just have the rising edge and falling edge of every switch we care about triggers a toggle. And that's all there is to it. It's much simpler to expand this for more switches. If we want to expand it again, we've got, we can just copy paste the switch three into a switch four and we're good to go. So let's run that again. Got the four way visualization here with three switches. Notice again, it starts as off. I can click through these things every time a switch state changes, the light changes, the light toggles. So this, this for me is very easy to think about. It's much easier than the, the three switches example uh, where we had to do it all in one run. And I think that also makes it easier to troubleshoot, easier to expand. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think, as always. Post something in the comments. Check out the example file. We're going to share that. There will be a download link in the description. And uh, keep on coming back. We're going to keep putting these out for you. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.